Hey everybody, welcome to the Happy Harvest Homestead. Today we are talking about properly treating rabbit wounds. While of course everyone hopes that throughout their entire long multi-year rabbit raising career, no rabbits have any issues, no rabbits have any sickness or problems or wounds, it is inevitable that sometime it'll happen. So having a plan in place and knowing what to do, it will be very beneficial for you. Honestly, what you choose to do when your rabbits get a wound has everything to do with your meat rabbitry goals. If you don't have goals set up yet, then you don't know what you're working towards and you can easily sway yourself into making mistakes or spending too much money on something or treating your livestock like pets. So establishing your rules and your goals first will make all your future choices easier. I've made a video talking in more detail about that and I will link that above in the iCard, it should pop up around now, and then also in the description box below. There are four main options you have when your rabbit gets a wound. It could be as simple as a little nose scratch through the bars from the bunny in the next cage, or maybe they ripped off a nail, or it could be something as terrible as half of their back fur and skin is missing, like what happened to me and Zuzu a couple months ago. The first option is the most effective and also the worst option for most meat rabbit breeders, and that is taking your bunny to the vet. It is very expensive, very hard, and most people will not want to follow this option. Option number two is going to the farm store, buying some sort of ointment or medication or something, and treating your rabbit with pharmaceutical products yourself. Option number three is slightly better which is treating your rabbit yourself with natural remedies like herbs or homemade ointments or apple cider vinegar or coconut oil. And then the last option and my favorite option, what I think will be better for everybody in the long run is not treating them at all and letting them heal by themselves. If they are hardy enough to survive by themselves and heal from a wound by themselves, then you keep them and keep those strong genetics but if they are weak and can't heal from a simple wound, then you don't want those bad genetics in your herd. You don't want those corrupting your future babies. So you just get rid of them and replace them with a stronger rabbit genetics. I know it sounds harsh and mean at first, but before you all freak out and rush to tractor supply for some ivermectin or some probiotic paste thingy, let me assure you that I have had many experiences with wounded rabbits of all ages. I've had kits with missing limbs and missing ears. I've had adult rabbits with ripped ears and scratched noses. Like I mentioned before, one of my past does, Zuzu, she had a huge open wound. All the fur and skin was bitten off by another rabbit. It was a massive wound about the size of my hand. I've had all sorts of wounds in all sorts of weathers and all sorts of setups and cages and colonies in summer and winter. And I can tell you, that for the most part, everything goes much better than you would expect. Of course, your mind goes to infection and flies laying eggs on the wounds and then maggots being born and eating the rabbit alive and terrible things like that. But I can assure you that rabbits are much better at healing than we as pampered humans think. I believe I've only had one instance of a wound getting infected and that was when a little baby bunny had his foot all mauled and mangled when a mama accidentally cleaned him too much. But all the other wounded kits I've had, all the other wounded adults I've had, have not gotten infected and they have scabbed over and they have healed completely on their own. And a lot of these wounds have been pretty gnarly and I was sure they would get infected, 100% sure. And I figured I would just wait a couple days to be extra sure before I culled them and put them out of their supposed misery. But they healed up just fine, and I was so glad I didn't cull them too soon. So obviously, I would suggest not doing anything, but if you are an extremely soft-hearted person and can't be that strong, I guess you could treat them with natural remedies or something like that. Thanks for watching.